him at all. Just through five games, whether it's the way you grade the tape or what you've seen. Recording in progress. Um, which one of your running backs, Kevon Lee, Noah Kane, John Lovett, do you feel has been most effective? And then what does, is one of those guys close to maybe being your main guy, or do you like that way that rotation has been so far? I, I think the most important thing that, that we can do at, at, uh, at all positions is, is continue to uh, make the guys compete and try to get somebody to emerge as a clear number one. And, and right now, those guys are, are continuing to battle and, and compete against one another. Um, and, and with that, usually good things happen, and, and we're looking for um, increased production at all positions, at every position. Um, and I think that the running back position um, is, is, uh, is again, one of those positions where we need guys to emerge and, and keep the competition um, battles going. And right now, that's, that's the plan. So you'll, you'll see um, a rotation, and uh, hopefully uh, we, can, we can go with more of one particular running back than another because somebody gets hot or, or somebody's feeling a groove and somebody emerges as a number one. But um, at the same time, if they all continue to improve, then you're going to consistently see uh, an equal number of reps. I think that's the best way to handle that situation. Audrey and then Corey, go ahead, Audrey. Hey, Mike, thanks for your time. I think they're going to have to get your computer or something. Um, yeah. <laughs> Wanted to ask you about Sean Clifford and what ways that he's developed. Um, what's impressed you most so far with Sean through five games? Um, his ability to absorb the information. Um, he, he takes the game plan and he really studies it hard. He does a great job preparing. Um, that's something that you, you don't know about any individual until you actually get to work with him on a real game-to-game -game basis. And he's been very consistent. Um, his mentality has been very even keel and poised. Um, he's a fiery person by nature, but he's able to stay calm and adjust. And, you know, with as much experience as Sean has, I think the biggest attribute that he has is that is the poise that he has. Um, he, he, can, he can regroup if things aren't going great and get back into rhythm. And so that's something that I think is unique about him and it is a really good quality that any quarterback should have. Let's go to Corey Geiger and then Tyler Donahue. Hey, good morning, Mike. Uh, this is probably an oversimplified question, but sometimes when teams are great at throwing, maybe they're not great at running. Or if they're great at running, maybe they're not great at throwing. What is the challenge, if you're great in one area, to spend an equal amount of time to be relatively similar in, in, in both areas. You mean, you said, what's the challenge to the, all that? Yeah, if, if your offensive line is tremendous at run blocking, everybody's tremendous at running, how do you get better passing? Or if you're tremendous at passing, how do you get better running? Well, obviously, you, you, you practice it, obviously. But I think to your point, it, what you're saying is there has to come a point in time where you're like, okay, um, let's play more to our strengths and less to our weaknesses. Um, I, I think there has to be somewhat of a balance within your offense, and any successful offense is going to be effectively both on the ground and through the air. In what, like what we try to do, is the more effective our ground game is, the more effective our pass game is going to be. We're not the other way around. Um, at times you can be, at times you can be, at times the pass can open up the run. Um, but at the same time, there needs to be a physical um, element to it, um, an attitude about it, a mentality about it that we're trying to establish. At the same time, you've got to move the ball and score points. So to your question, I think you're on it. I think you understand it probably a little bit deeper than some, um, you know, are you running plays just to run plays and, and can we just get out more with scoring points? Um, that, that's a fine line and, and we have to continue to uh, put ourselves in the best position to win football games. And what matters most is turnovers, securing the football. The run game will help with that so you're not putting pressure on your quarterback. Um, 
there's an attitude about it, right? There's a physical presence. Um, the game is physical. You make people tackle, uh, make them defend blocks on every play that you run the ball. So that's very important. But at the same time, it's about ball security, being exposed and scoring points. So however you got to get that done. And a lot of times, to be quite honest with you, the defense is going to dictate whether it's run or pass. If they got too many guys up, well, then the numbers say we should throw it. You know, you can't beat your head up against the wall, but you have to take what the defense gives you. So whether that's an RPO or whether it's a play pass or whether it's just a true drop back or quick game, you know, you're, you're trying to take advantage of, of how many safeties are, are, are deep and, and what their depths are and all that sort of thing. I hope I answered that question well enough for you. Let's go to uh, Tyler Donahue and then Rich Garcella. Hi, Mike. Hope you're well. <clears throat> I wanted to ask about uh, Jahan Dotson. We've seen you use him in a variety of ways, thrown the ball a couple times. When you've got a playmaker of his caliber, how does that motivate you as a play caller? And does he remind anybody, uh, d remind you of anybody from your past um, that you've encountered in, in an offense? Um, yeah, there was a few guys that it reminds me of. Uh, I don't like to get into too many comparisons, however. Um, he, he's, uh, he's a guy that um, he's really good with the ball in his hands. Um, he finishes his catches with tough runs. Um, lowers his pads and um, brings a physical element and a finish. If you watch him, you'll see that that's where the magic exists with him is uh, to me, it's how he gets open. It's his ball skills, catching the ball. And then it's his ability to finish after the catch that makes him a complete receiver. Um, there's areas for him to improve. There's no question about that. And then really going back to the first part of your question, you know, you want to try to get him involved as much as you possibly can. And at the same time, you, you don't want to be silly and, and try to jam the ball into double coverage. And so there's going to be a point in time where they take him away. We still want to be a balanced offense. Sometimes when we stay balanced, it's not just running past, but it's balance on distribution. I think we've spread the ball around this year to other receivers, although he leads us, um, Jahan. I think that uh, we have shown the ability to go elsewhere with the ball if coverage dates. Again, the defense tells us what we have to do with the ball. So, yeah, he may be primary, but if they take him away, we've got to go elsewhere with the football. Hi, Mike. How would – how would you describe the progress and the state of the offense to this point and how far does it have to go to get where you want it to be? Well, the main thing that we're doing well is we're securing the football. We're scoring enough points to win games. Um, and that's as the bottom line. Um, that's most important. We need to become more explosive. Um, we need to run the football better. Um, our pass protection, I think, has been good. Um, our receivers and tight ends have played well. Our running backs are still coming along. They're definitely good enough. There's no question about it. Um, for whatever reason, the rhythm hasn't been um, to where it needs to be to be elite. And, and uh, you know, I think um, for whatever reason, I think, I, you know, to just try to pinpoint one thing, I know everybody wants, what is it? You know, what is it? Is it, you know, is it this? Is it that? It's a combination, combination of things. And um, so we just have to put an entire game together, play for 60 minutes, and really come out and practice our butts off and really work at it and really don't block out all the noise. The, the fact is, is we've done enough on offense to win. And as long as we continue to do that, that's really all that matters. Um, we're never going to reach a point to where we're satisfied. So regardless of what we've scored, what we've gained, how we've thrown it, how we've run it, um, we're never satisfied. So that's the mentality we're always going to have, regardless of any statistical analysis. Um, but we know this, securing the football is, is most important, being explosive, is second scoring points 
obviously third and, and really scoring is more important than being explosive but it takes everybody it takes everything and when a, and when it and when it doesn't go well it's usually related to a combination of things and there's so much to it that's why it's such a beautiful game you need all 11 on every play and uh you know it's my responsibility to make sure that these guys are are, are doing the best that they can together and uh as long as we continue to work, we have confidence that we're going to get uh, the most out of our guys. Hey, Mike. Uh, I want to ask you about Sean Clifford in, in the pocket, the, the progress he's made since, since you've had him, kind of navigating his way, being able to step up in the pocket, look downfield, and still make the, the proper decision on, on when to take off and run. How, how much progress have you seen him make there since, since, you've, been, since you've been in town? Well, it, 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 it segues right into this, right? So it's, again, it's about protection, right? It's like, oh, it's Sean, it's Sean, it's Sean. So how's Sean improve? Sean improve? Sean improve? Dude, it's, it's, it's team game. So the protection is better, and that's going to and that's gonna help Sean, right? The protection's poor, quarterback's going to look poor. I don't know what to tell you. It's been, it's been the case. When Tom Brady beat Tom Brady, if the, if the Browns drafted him. Back in back in uh, 1974, wherever he came out, no, he wouldn't. You know, so it, it's all relative. So how he's improved, and and you know, I I think he's improved, but I think it's so relative to what we're doing up front and how we're pass protecting better. Um, you know, I'm not going to sit here and, and take credit for it. The offensive line deserves a lot of credit. The receivers deserve a lot of credit. Tight ends and running backs. Uh, they've done a great job, and we need to continue to, to build on that. Um, I think Sean has has made up his mind to be a tough SOB and and to stand in there and keep his eyes downfield on a consistent basis. Um, that needs to continue to grow. It, it's, it's one of those things where that's one of the things about being a quarterback is you have to have that. You have to have that. We were watching film of, of uh, Phillip Rivers yesterday or Tuesday. And boy, there was a three technique that got loose and he stood back there and he made, you know, he couldn't stride. We called it no stride throw. And he was just able to rotate his torso with no stride, no space. And he just drove a 15 yard curl right in there. And that's what it takes. At times, that's what it takes. Now, Sean's got an athletic ability. Last game, he had huge scrambles. So at the same time, you say that when, you, when he feels it's, uh, you know, a certain coverage, and they've lost contain. If he wants to get out, you got to let him get out. You know, he's got to have that creativity. And then there's the fine line of, okay, eyes downfield, stay tough. And then, hey, man, get out. You know, you don't want to handcuff a kid. So how, how you manage that and how you coach that, to me, is, is the, is the magic secret sauce, really. And uh, that's the fun of it all and getting to know one another and good, good conversations, man. You know, it's kind of like it, it, with, with a guy like Sean, you have football conversations. You, you know, it's it's not all one-way communication. You want to learn from him. How, what did you see? You know, how did you feel of it? Um, okay, next time think about this. Here, keep this in your mind, you know. And you're just trying to, trying to help him out as much as you can. And at the end of the day, my man's got to make some plays, you know. Sorry. Nubias Wilborn with the Post-Gazette and then T. Frank, you're on deck. Hey, thanks for everything. Glad we got that uh, internet straight there. Yep, thank you. And hopefully that uh, that list wasn't a ranking of media members, but uh, <laughs> uh, but from there, when you look at Sean Clifford, particularly his ability to extend plays with his legs and his ability to get some yards, one is how fast is he, but also how does that speed help really all phases of the offense. Um, yeah, he's a high four or five guy. I think he was clocked in the 40 as fast as time here at Penn State. I don't know if it was a four, five, eight, four, five, seven, somewhere around there. Um, don't quote me on that number. I don't want to talk to strength staff, but, uh, you know, any, any quarterback, the more mobile they are, the harder they are to defend. I mean, it brings another element to your run game. Obviously we have to be smart and, and protect them, but at the same time, you got to play to his strengths and you got to run some, some quarterback runs. Um, but it just makes you more dynamic, harder to defend, stretch it vertically and 
and be able to push the ball down the field with his arm and then be able to also create the option element with the spread offense, I think is uh, it's tough. It puts stress on any defense. Uh, hey, good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. I want to ask you uh, about your deep passing game, uh, you know, as a whole. What sort of benchmarks are you looking for in terms of efficiency or output, and how would you evaluate how that has gone so far this season? Yeah, great question. Um, I don't have a, a, a real definitive answer for you um, as far as a, a percentage of shots down the field per game, so to speak, um, because that, again, is dictated by what coverage that we're facing. Uh, I think the biggest thing about the deep passing game um, that is important is the quarterback's footwork, the timing, and the receiver's uh, route running, depth, uh, break points, and landmarks, big on landmarks. So if we know the timing and where it's supposed to be and when it's supposed to be there, and if we run as fast as we possibly can, uh, in order to get there, and the quarterback times it up well, you give your best chance for success on any vertical attacking passing game. Um, it's not just about, hey, this is a deep ball, go man run. There's a lot of technique to it. Um, and I think the most critical thing about that is, is how do you practice the deep ball? Because if you think about it, these guys have to go run, I don't, I don't know how many plays, uh, 30 plays on Tuesday, full speed, how many deep shots are you going to take? If you take three deep shots, man, you have to get the scout team to give the right look. Um, the protection has to be right. Um, if it's a bad snap, that's a bummer because those reps, you're probably only going to get those three reps all week. So they're so precious. And, and so your routes on air to your pat and go, all of your individuals um, have to all add up and, and, bank um all those things and come saturday you should see the fruits of that and um that, i think that's what's most important i i'd like to get into more detail about how we teach it and what we teach it but i really hate giving away the specific information but it is it is important that we get timing right footwork right the ball's got to be up at a certain time the receivers you know they have to be looking at a certain distance and and those sorts of things are critical on your vertical passing game all right, we got time for a few more. John Sauber, Center Daily Times, and then Mark Wogenrich are on deck. Hey, Mike. James mentioned last night one of the things that's impressed him most about you is your love for plays and your creativity. Where does that creativity come from, and what does it take for you to add a new play to the playbook? Well, my my wife, uh, she she loves trick plays, so uh, you know she she inspires me. And no, no, I'm just kidding, but she does. Who doesn't, right? But they got to be effective and it's not about being fancy. It's about being effective. Um, you know, the creativity and, and that sort of thing. Um, you're just trying to create space. Um, it's not about sex appeal. It's about efficiency. And so, uh, that's all we're trying to do. We're trying to disguise free guys up and put our best players in space. And so if that takes, me standing on my head, then I'm going to stand on my head. It doesn't really matter how we get there as long as we do it. So we just got to make sure that we continue to, to be, you know, creative and innovative. Um, I think the one thing, uh, you know, about, you know, a little bit of innovation in your offense is that the players really enjoy it. Um, they, they, they love it. You know, they embrace it. And that's the best part about being here is Coach Franklin's culture and how we, uh, how he's, and the staff and the strength staff and everybody around this program has kind of uh, um, just gotten all together. And, and they're so, they embrace um, everything that's introduced to them with an eagerness to learn it and master it. And that's what it takes because we can all sit here and think of a really cool play. Um, but if, if the players don't own it, then it, it won't matter what the design is so the, really the players need the credit um not not necessarily the creation and innovation it's really the execution that it boils down to so hats off to our guys
Yes, Mayor. Mike, just following up on John's question, what is it about plays that you love designing? And which one's your favorite? Um, you know, I don't have favorite favorites or touchdowns. You know, the favorite's going to be what it takes to, to beat Iowa. I don't care if that's quarterback sneak or whatever, counterplay, what, it doesn't matter to me. Um, you know, it, it's just, it's again, it's just about being creative and, and, and trying to uh, stay within at the same time. You don't want to go so far outside that you become a different identity and you're asking your guys to do something they're not used to. So it goes back to all the way to spring ball, how you've been stalled. Um, you know, you're trying to bank reps and concepts, and then you're trying to complement the looks. So if you have a reverse in, maybe you put a reverse pass off the reverse and that sort of thing. You're constantly trying to complement um, your your plays and, and uh, you know, whether it's a flea flicker or whatever, a couple of those are good. But at the end of the day, it becomes about base offense um, and it becomes about creating space and, and room for your best players. And that's all we're trying to do. You know, every time that you think you thought of something new, it was probably run a hundred times before, you know, I tell you what's interesting is going back through the, uh, um, the, the museum here at the stadium, Beaver stadium. I was going through and I saw uh, coach angles, uh, old school playbook. And he had a shovel pass, uh, drawn up on, on one of the sheets. And I mean, verbatim, you know, um, it was exactly uh, looked like the one we ran last week, although we lined up illegally, unfortunately. Maybe I should have looked a little bit closer at Coach Angle's playbook. Last question, we'll go to Neil Rudell. Neil, we can't hear you. Sorry, Neil, still can't hear you. We'll finish up with Tyler Donahue. All right, uh, Mike, I just wanted to ask, now that you've had a chance to, to watch them through weak practices and a little bit of game action, take one Roberson and Christian. Um, what, what has stood out about them and the way they've gone to work behind Sean this season? Yeah, they've been awesome to coach. Those guys are, they're a fun group, man. It's a really good room. They got the right mentality. Um, they, they really uh, are passionate about becoming really good quarterbacks. Um, you know, they're, they're good guys to be around. They've got the right mentality. They help Sean out as much as they possibly can. They're team guys, but yet they're competitive. So they got the right stuff uh, inside the good people, which is awesome. So I'm a very lucky coach to be able to coach all those guys. They've been coached in high school very well, obviously, and their parents have done a heck of a job raising them. So for me to have those guys has been a blessing. Truly, I mean that. Um, you know, Taquan, um, the ball can really pop out of his hand, man. Um, he's got really good explosion. Um, he's got a really good whip, you know, with the, with arm. Um, and yet he's got really good core strength that allows him to rotate and really snap the ball out there. Um, so his accuracy is good. Um, sometimes he'll get a little bit wild in pocket with a little bit too much bounce or, you know, sometimes his head comes off to the side and he needs to stay more, more vertical or what we say staying erect with his sternum from head all the way down through his base. Um, so that's, that's really important for him to continue to, to work that fundamental. But I, I, I love uh, watching him throw the ball. Um, he's still continuing to learn. I think, you know, protections, the finer things, of what's a bad run, when do we want to uh, try to get out of a play um, and be alert for certain things. Maybe it's whatever blitz in the red zone, those little things that sneak up on you that you really need, you know, work in the, in the, in the fire to get better at those things. So we try to put them in situations throughout the week where we challenge them. Uh, we've been doing that for a while now. And uh, boy, I, I, uh, I'm excited or what's in his future. And then CB, um, you know, Christian's done a tremendous job as well. He's continuing to get better every day fundamentally. Uh, he too is still learning the game, 
but he'll he'll make some plays now where you're you, you, you look and and you say okay you know this kid's got a bright future as well so we're very happy with both young men and uh you know i couldn't be more happy about their progress and uh look forward to seeing them execute as as we continue to go down the road this season